Uh, Richard, thanks for your time as always. You're just welcome. to get a check on the squad situation at the moment, how are you looking injury wise? Yeah, pretty good. I think injury wise, um, you know, we came through okay. Um, Nathan Petru will be back, uh, you know, had some, some final checks. You know, we had to get a, 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 another little scan just to check on his eye, but he's good to go. So, yeah, we're choosing from a fairly fairly fit and healthy squad, apart from the obvious long termers, uh, except Richie Myler picked a, a one game suspension up for a, for a little tripping incident and about 10 minutes to go in the game at the weekend. How disappointed are you to be missing Richie for this one? Yeah, disappointed, but he, you know he's going to give someone else an opportunity. You know, it's not some, something that we've dwelled on too much. He's broke the rules, and you know after repeated warnings about his tackle technique, so at some point, you know, unfortunately, they're going to pick up on that, um, and you know we'll have to cope with it this week. Um, but you, you know, we're confident we can. Uh, you know, whichever way we go, team selection wise, you know, we'll, we'll cover it. I was going to say, do you know in your mind who you have to replace him, or are you wanting to see something in training from maybe someone to go? Yeah, to well, a, li- a little bit of our selection this week um, we've talked about in, in training, uh, in that we have got a number number of middles fit. Um, we've got this, you know, suspension over Richie, so we we got a couple of permutations um, that we can we can put in there and have a look at. Uh, but in particular with our middles too, you know, we feel that. I f- I feel for five or six weeks, you know, we've been up. I think our middles have been up. I think you know, apart from the first five minutes and the last five minutes in St. Ellen's, I think we've been been a very committed defensive team. We've got a lot of the a lot of the little things right in our defence. Uh, but you know, that was sadly missing at the weekend. Um, so yeah, we just put it to our middles this week that I guess we wanted to create a bit of tension with them and see who performed best in a in a couple of fairly intense training sessions before we decided on. You know, on the final makeup of our team, um, as I say, I, th- I think defensively, we've done a lot of good things over the last few weeks. So you know, we we got a poor performance at the wrong time for us. Saying that, you mentioned you got like Nathaniel back. I mean, how good is it to have a bit more more grunt? In the yeah, and another big body. You know, and we have had some guys that that have played extraordinarily big minutes over a number of weeks in there. So to get a a fit, fresh, big body back in there, uh, and a guy that you know he was in pretty decent form before he got injured too. Um, so having him back in, in for selection, you know, he's, he's very welcome for us at this moment in time. Brad Singleton as well, is he looking at? Yeah, obviously he'll be back in, contin- back in contention after, after a one-game ban too. So, so the makeup of, of our start middle uh, and, and our bench at the moment, you know, we've, we probably know the bulk of, of, of the guys that will be taking part, but we've got one or two to drop out before the last run. You mentioned very honestly about the, the defence after the hockey hour game just now as well. How important yeah. is it to, to get that right when you come up against a team like Hull FC? Oh, well, I think it's shown. I think it's shown what it can do for us. You know, I, I would wholly applaud our boys' commitment to defence you know, over a number of weeks. Uh, but at the weekend, um, you know, we, we talked about some of those little areas over chasing. Uh, our marker work was poor. And you know, not being connected in our line, not working hard enough from the inside, and and it's it's a choice. You know, it weren't anything that OKR were, were massively doing to us. I, I don't want to underplay that. I thought Danny Maguire and 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 OKR had a had a superb game at the weekend, but I still felt that you know we had the choice whether we wanted to work hard enough in some of those areas or not. And you know, I guess it's it's my job to make sure that they are ticking off those boxes and they are working hard enough. As I say, I, I applaud the way our guys have bought in over a number of weeks, but, you know, for this one, you know, trying to find a reason, sometimes it's left us a bit scratching our heads this week. You know, is it a case of maybe there's been a, you know, a bit of playoff talk around, you know, while there's been relegation talk, we've not been taking too much notice of that and there were a bit of how far can Leeds go if they string some more wins together and, you know, maybe we, we took our eye you know, we were looking a little bit further in front than what we needed to. So, you know, bringing it back to, you know, some of those fundamentals, what served us so well and some of that togetherness uh, and working within our system. Um, you know, we, we saw a couple of really strong defensive performances in, in the weeks before that. So we, we need to get back to that, get back to it quickly. You know, you mentioned Hull FC. Um, I, think, I think they've got a spine that's been together a fair while and know each other's games now. They all possess... Different, different qualities and strengths. Uh, so whichever sort of four out of the five players to go, um, you know, th- they're all on the same page and they will all possess different threats, whether that be through kick, you know, through running game, through, through good passing games. Um, and, and they've got a lot of big bodies and a lot of power out there you know, on the edges. So you know, that, you know that you're in for a physical game. 
and you know you're playing a team that are you know very good at converting set starts. I think they scored more tries from from kickoffs than any other team, so long range tries um, in the competition. And you know the third in the table. I think the record over the last ten games, you know, is the odd anomaly in there, but I think they've been pretty strong and pretty consistent. So, you know, we're expecting a tough challenge. Um, but at the same time, we've proved that when we get our, our best defensive effort out there, we're more than a match for anyone. I was going to say, could, could you sense this week in training that the players realised that it was an opportunity missed against Hull County and they're really keen to prove a point this time around? Well, we'll find out about, about our bounce back, won't we? Um, yeah, but we missed an opportunity. Yeah, and again, I don't want to. I don't want sort of take. I feel like you're taking away from the opposition if you say you missed an opportunity. But you know, we're at home. Um, they're all tricky games. Every every game we've got left, they're all winnable and, and and they're all losable if you don't get your right attitude and and desire and and commitment to it on that on the day. And, and we were enough off, you know, for that to be a really difficult first twenty minutes. There, there's some other strands to it too. You know, without harping on about last week too much is, you know, second play of the game we we throw a. And grenade offload out there, and third set of the game, you know, our halfback throws the ball on the floor, and and and, you know, from from guys in key positions like that, in you know, in the opening exchanges of the game, um, you know, to be as loose with the ball, that that's bound to put you under pressure. So that that's another area that I think in the previous weeks we've proven that, you know, if we play some, uh, you know, a little bit more solidly with the ball, you know, you were in better field position. Just finally, I'll see a former club of yours. You get a little extra buzz coming into games. No, none whatsoever. It's been a long time since I left there. Um, you know, I had I had some good years at Hull. Uh, you know, I experienced some some major finals. Um, you know, some some difficult years as well, like most coaches do. Um, but no, nah, it's been a long time left. Very much a different club, and different people to the ones that, uh, that were around when I was there. Lee Radford, who's a coach, is, is a friend of mine, and you know, pleased he's done. He's done so well in the job. Uh, you know he's a good guy, and he's got him playing some good footy. But you know, in terms of on a personal level, now there's not much, you know, not much. Uh, how can I say extra incentive? All all my incentive and motivation this week is is around getting getting our guys, you know, to replicate the sort of form that they've shown, you know, a number of times over the last four or five weeks. Lovely, thank you, Richard. Cheers. Do you think Hull have quietly gone about their business this year? Obviously, there's been a lot of talk about St Helens and Warrington, but they're they're right up there at the top end of the semi final next week as well. Yeah, they are. They're in the semi-final. The record, obviously, in the Challenge Cup over the last number of years has been a, a, a very, very good one. So you'd suggest that Radders knows how to handle these type of situations. Um, keep some, Someone asked me earlier in the week about inconsistencies. I might be wrong here, but they might have won seven out of the last ten. I think that's pretty consistent stuff when you look how the comp is, is unravelling. You know, a lot of teams in the comp from some four, sort of fourth place down, it's a couple of wins... Defeat, couple of wins, defeat, and that that generally pretty much is rolling down the competition. But you know, I think seven out of ten. You thought the anomaly in there is uh, a defeat by St. Ellens, who, who to be fair, have put the cleaners through most teams this year. Um, a defeat in a derby at Hull KR after a French trip. You know, you can see some sort of reasons in that. And then, yeah, I guess the real anomaly was the the fifty point defeat at Magic Weekend, which, which probably you know. Left Radder scratching his head a little bit where that came from, but I think they've been pretty strong and solid. And I looked at, I'd say, I looked to the uh, the balance of the team, the number of players in the team that, that can change a game. Uh, you know, with good pieces of play, um, you know, and, and the big powerful bodies they've got, and a team that's pretty settled with each other. No, I think, I think, you know, the top two are, are obviously the teams to mark out, but there's a couple of couple of teams quietly moving up on the rails in, in Hull and Wigan that, you know, they'll be there when the whips are cracking, that's for sure. Rhys Martin's had a couple of games under his belt. Yeah. Are you pleased about he's settling into the group? Yeah, di- difficult game for him last week. You know, we disjointed, certainly disjointed in attack when, when we got the sort of limited amount of good ball we did. Uh, but you can see in training, you know, I'll, I'll probably stand by what I said a couple of weeks ago, so he's going to be a good player for us. He brings a lot to the table in attack. He's, he's keen for the ball. He's got the ability to get plays on. You know, we saw at the weekend his, his timing in running lines and and a knife for the try line is very good. His goal kicking unfortunately let us down a little bit last week, um, but I think we'll see over the course of time that he's you know he'll prove his worth in that department as well. So uh, on top of that, he's a super kid. Really happy to be here. Um, he's been blown away by um, I guess what he's walked into. You know, a, a good set of lads. Um, you know, magnificent stadium. The fans have been. Awesome with him as well. Um, so I think he's a guy that at the moment is looking forward to the next game and, and what's in front of him.
you mentioned he <coughs> took over the goal kicking towards the end of the game. Don't yeah. <coughs> will he continue or will it be Liam Sutcliffe on, on Sunday? Yeah, no, Reese will continue. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll stick with Reese. We feel that, you know, his, his past record as a goal kicker has, has been a very, very good one. You know, he hits the ball uh, very true. Um, and, and very long as well. He's got a long kick, so so we'll probably stick around um, and, and get Reese through and stick with him as our goal kicker at this moment in time. And you spoke last week about the impact Sean Blunt had on the side on, the, on his yeah second debut. Looking for more of that consistency from him on, on Sunday. Yeah, a little bit of calmness and, and delivering the ball. Um, some organisational skills in there. I thought Sean, you know, showed one of the reasons why we thought he could be a good sort of foil for Brad and they could be a good partnership and, you know he brings a different style of attack and different organisational abilities to us um, so you know, you know obviously one game under his belt and a difficult game at that but yeah we're looking forward to seeing more of Sean in that role